you want to become wise, get advice from a wise person. And we are privileged to have wise people, wise women of God, wise men of God, and a wise man of God. Amen. Amen. Please help me welcome everybody just come and give us a word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God. God is good. God is good. Uh, no, we are blessed. We are blessed to be this church. I remember when we started, it was 2nd of Jan this year, and I have seen what God has done in our lives. He, he, he has like, you know, moved us step by step. And the message that have been preached from this prophet, oh my God, oh my God. I'm telling you, if, if you've missed any, we've got everything recorded on YouTube. Uh, almost everything, actually, yeah. Um, it's there. But God has blessed us so, so much. And as I was um, contemplating and thinking um, about what to speak about today, um, I've had to look back where God has taken us from and where we are today. And I really, really strongly believe that, first of all, we are here for a purpose. Amen. You are here for a purpose. It's not an accident that you're here. God wants to work something in you. God is leading you to some place. And he's here to, to impart his life into you and then to dispatch you somewhere. Um, just thinking, thinking on that, I was thinking about the last three weeks. Uh, first time I came after being away uh, was Mr. Shami who preached. And she preached about the spirit behind. The spirit behind. Um, and then um, the week after that was the general who preached about grow up grow up and then minister aunt offering she ministered about being rescued we are rescued but if you've noticed all these messages are all in the direction of what growth growth maturity how many of us agree that it takes a mature christian to be able to discern the spirit behind something right and then going back to what uh, the general preached on about growing up, God is sending a message to us. God wants us to move us from where we are to the next stage. All right? Amen. Amen. So to start with, let's go to, um, to the book of Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're just going to read two verses from there. So this is Apostle Paul uh, writing to the church in Corinth. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual, but as to carnal, even as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able to. So, he is writing to the church, the church, the saints at Corinth, who were saved, but were living Daddy. like the people of the world. They, are, they were living a kind of life. Now, from no. where, where I'm going today, probably this might not be the good foundation of the scripture, but there is something that I want us to see here. What we see from these uh, verses, they are stages. You know, there are stages to, to the life of a Christian. So there is uh, the lower stage, which is the carnal, carnal, carnal Christian, like somebody who's a babe in Christ. You know what I mean? The, 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 the general priest about them ones that they just want to be feed me, clean me up, feed me, clean up, clean me up. <laughs> and when you think of a, of a baby, um, we have two babies, they are helpless. Babies, if you're a baby, all you need is just, you need somebody to look after you. You need somebody to care for you. You don't have the capability 
to look after another. You know what I mean? So you you just there, you know, um, cute but little baby. But God doesn't want us to remain in that state, and that's the whole point of Apostle Paul of writing to this church. He was encouraging them that this is who you are, and God wants you to move to the next stage. And I believe that even in this church, we have reached that point where God wants us to move to the next stage, where God wants to reveal deeper things of God because there is a purpose why we're here. Right? Hallelujah. Um, so, now, how is the Lord going to do that? How is the Lord going to do that? Um, and that brings me to, to my message this morning. I've entitled this message the secret of a spiritual life. A secret of a spiritual life. Because if you read there, it says, I'm not going to speak to you as spiritual people, even though they were spiritual people. You know, and we are spirit beings. You know, when God created us, He molded us, and He gave us a spirit. So you and I are spiritual people. So I'm not going to waste my time to define what a spiritual person is because you are spiritual because you have the spirit of God in you. Amen. Right? And God, there's a certain way that God wants us to live as spiritual people. Right? But we cannot live that way without the spirit of God in us. Right? Um, you know, and this spiritual life that I'm talking about is not spiritual life as the world defines it. You know, people have got different ideas what it means to be spiritual. But the Bible is very, very clear about what it means to be spiritual. Right? And to help us with that, if we turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8, and we will do a bit of reading from there. We're going to read the first 16 verses. And in there, there is so much that we can learn about what it means to be a spiritual man. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. In your Bible, you can underline that. So the Bible says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit in life, Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4 That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit of the, the, spirit, the, the things of the Spirit, um, let me read that again. But they that are after the Spirit, the things are of the Spirit. And then verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, it is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but 
the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, the flesh you shall die. But if through the spirit do multiply, multiply the deeds, the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Yeah. There's so much in there that we can take. And it explains you all what it means to be a spiritual man. There are two, two lives here. There is the spirit, there is also the flesh. And the Bible is clear. To be spiritual is to have the Spirit of God in you. To be spiritual is to have the Spirit working in you, influencing your manner of your life. When the Bible talks about to walk after, it is talking about the conduct. The conduct. So it's not just here we come to church and we be spiritual. No. We can be spiritual whilst you are driving, washing the plates, you're walking. You know, everything about you is spiritual because now you are under the influence of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So to, to even, just to go further, just, um, I want us to read another verse, a command from the Lord. And then I'll come back to talk more about the life in the spirit and then give you the secret of a spiritual life. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to verse 18. The Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So that's the command of God. The Bible is saying we shouldn't be drunk with wine, but we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it means that it's no longer you now. The Holy Spirit has taken over your life. Amen. Your thoughts become His thoughts. Everything becomes about the Holy Ghost. And, you know, I don't know if you've, if you've drunk before. Uh, I, I've drunk so many times. And I have been drunk so many times. And when you are drunk, you are not on your own. The alcohol takes over. You will be walking. You see, you see a post. If you turn into a post, even kicking it, <laughs> because you're gone. You're gone. The alcohol is taken over. But <laughs> that's the life that God is calling us to. God wants us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That there is none, none of us at all. No flesh whatsoever. The Bible normally talks about we put the, de the, the, the deeds of the flesh in our bodies by the Spirit of God. We mortify our flesh. We, 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 you know, the Bible talks about carrying our cross daily life. Jesus advises and said, you know, if you're if you not able to, to carry your cross, on a daily basis, you can never be his disciple. What does that mean? It's talking about denying ourselves. You know, the flesh, the spirit wants you to pray. The flesh is thinking about his tenders. 
you know, the, the freshest thing about the next Netflix series. You want to come church? The flesh is like, mm, just like two more minutes. Two more minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it's like somebody that is drunk. Yes. You just get up. It's not you. It's not you. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost ruling and we are, you know, um, it's such a blessing. Yeah. It's something that I can't even utter with my words. Like, I can only pray, oh God, help me so. Talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. It is such a blessed thing. The peace, the joy. You know, talking about self-control. Talking about love, loving the unlovable. Having that compassion for the lost. We are talking about having the mind of Christ in us. We are talking about just Christ being our Lord. Not just our Savior for our sins, but Christ being our Lord. Like, we are, we are like the kings of our lives most of the times. We are sitting on the throne. But when the Spirit takes over, we are dethroned. It's taken over. It's ruling. It's leading us. It's guiding us. And uh, it's not just for the show. There is a purpose why God gave us the Spirit. There is a purpose why God gave us the Spirit. There is a purpose why God wants us to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. There is a purpose. And who will be filled with the Holy Ghost today? If you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost today, you will receive it. In Jesus' name. Today is the end of the struggle. But not just today. Even going forward. Because what God wants us to do in our lives, he wants us to so he wants us to be filled to the to the extent that the Holy Ghost becomes like the air we breathe. That we do not think about it. right now you're breathing. The air is here. You're not thinking about breathing. You are just breathing. But God wants us to be like that. To be so filled and just breathing in. With the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want us to um, to look at John, the Gospel of John. We'll read a few verses from 14. Because I want to just go a deep uh, a little bit deeper and just give you um, three ingredients. Of um, three ingredients, or three, I mean, the Holy Ghost in us, as you saw in the Romans, it brings so much, it brings so much blessings to us. But I want just to give you three, the main three things that the Holy Ghost, when He's in us, that He works in us. The main three things that He does for you and for us. And to help us with that, I want to read. I want us to go to the Gospel of John. Um, we'll read from verse uh, chapter fourteen first. Um, the Gospel of John, chapter fourteen, and then we'll read a few verses in chapter sixteen as well. Uh, so the Gospel of John. Uh, let's start from verse 1. So now this is Jesus. He says, he, he was talking to his disciples. And I want you to get hold of this. Because this is it's going to change your life. Completely. Your life will never be the same. Um, and after today, you're going to begin to be filled all the time. You'll be filled today, you're going to be filled tomorrow, and you'll be filled next year. 
Amen. Amen. So now this is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ talking to his disciples. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Somebody says, Lord Jesus, that's easier said than that. <laughs> you know, you, you understand what I'm going through. Do you understand what I've been through? And you talking about not letting my heart to be troubled. But he says, it is our responsibility. And you see why it's not impossible. It is very, very possible not to let our hearts be troubled. And you see why. And then the Lord continues, In my Father's house are many mansions. If you were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas said, uh, Lord, we do not know where you go. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Now Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it's sufficient us. Jesus said to him, If I've been so long time with you, and yet has not known me, Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then, Show us the Father? Believe. Believe. Thou not that I am with the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I speak not myself, but the Father that dwell in me. It does the works. <laughs> believe me that I am with the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Very, very I say unto you. He that believe on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father and whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do he's not saying something he says whatsoever whatsoever you ask in my name that I'll do that my father be glorified in the son if you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Who is this comforter that he's talking about? And why would he give us a comforter if there is nothing to be comforted about? Jesus knew that in this world, will be trouble. In this world, we face challenges. Right? He was talking to the disciples and if you go to um, chapter 16, he talks more on this one. Um, chapter 16, verse 1. Again, this is this was a very long speech. It started from 14, 15, 16, 17. Just Jesus talking to his disciples. Um, in, in chapter 16, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Ye, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that it does cause service. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things are said not to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asked me, where, where are you going? 
But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Would you blame them? They had been with this man for three years. They had seen his power. And whenever there was trouble, he would come forth. Remember at some point, these guys were in the ship and then the storm came. They were they cried out, Master, don't you care, we are perishing. Jesus stood up. And what did he do? He calmed the storm. They had seen when people were sick, diseased, they brought the sick to him. The disciples they had seen their master heal the sick. They witnessed people dying and they saw their master raising the dead. When people were hungry and people needed food, the disciples didn't know what to do. They wanted to send the people away. But Jesus said, bring those five loaves. And what did he do? He multiplied everything and he fed the thousands. Amen. So, Jesus' presence in their life was everything. They depended on it. It meant everything. Because Jesus' presence met every need, met every need of theirs. Amen. He supplied every need to them. And that has not changed for you and I. But they saw Jesus in the flesh on a daily basis. And now he's talking about leaving them, going somewhere. Just, you see how they sort of filled their hearts? Because they just think, oh God, what are we going to do? These people, they just depended so much on Jesus. They had given up everything. Most of them were businessmen. They had given up their nets, their boats to follow Jesus. And it was the good thing that they done that. Because as a result, they were blessed. They saw miracles and wonders. But now the Lord is talking about going. So their hearts were filled of sorrow. They were thinking about, what are we going to do? When is his presence? Because his presence is everything to us. But look what the Lord said. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asked me where I go. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Oh, Jesus. He's saying that it, really, it was to their advantage that I had to go away. He said, really? How? How was it? You, they, they saw Jesus in the flesh. They saw what he had done. Now he's talking about going to the Father and he's telling them it, it's, it is to your advantage that I go. Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't make sense. Why? But he knew. He knew what he was going to do. He knew what he was going to do. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient that for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus is God now. As the comforter come, Yes, he has come. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here to take up Jesus' place. Amen. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you are filled with Jesus. Amen. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you are filled with Jesus' power. Amen. Everything that Jesus did, you are able to do Amen. because the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. If Jesus raised the dead, you have the power to raise the dead. Amen. If Jesus fed the hungry, you have the power Amen. to feed the hungry. Amen. If Jesus healed sickness and diseases, you have that power. Amen. But that power can only work through the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the reason why we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus talks about being in us. Jesus is only in us through the Holy Ghost. We have Jesus in us. The Bible says we are seated with him in heavenly places. 
How is that possible? You are here sitting there and in heaven as well. How is that possible? Jesus who is in heaven and still living in you. Amen. How is that possible? It's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because your spirit and Jesus' spirit are one. And your spirit right now is just as Jesus' spirit. It's perfect. The Bible says, as he is, so we are in this world. Not tomorrow, but today. In your spirit, you are just like Jesus. And that's the reason why he gave us the Holy Spirit is to bring the presence of Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost can give us that deeper, that, that deeper sense, that consciousness of His presence. That no way you are sitting there, no matter what I'm going through, Jesus is with me. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. As long as Jesus is with you, you are going places. You are an overcomer. Amen. You are more than conqueror. Amen. Because he, greater is he who is inside you than the one who is outside. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. And that, my brothers and sisters, that is a secret of a spiritual life. It's having the presence of Jesus. Not just today here in the church, but on daily basis, knowing the Lord is with me. God is with me. He, he did say, He did say in Matthew chapter 28, when He, when he commissioned us. Let's go there. Matthew 28, verse 18. Thank you, sir. And Jesus came and said unto them, mm -hmm. All power is given yes. to me. Yes. Yes. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things mm -hmm. whatsoever I have commanded you. Yes. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end yes. of the world. Yes. Yes. How how is he with you always? Always. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You know, it's one thing to have the Spirit of God. Every believer, if you have believed in on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is living on the inside you. But it's one thing to have the Spirit of God living on the inside you. It was it's another thing to walk in the Spirit. Right? A lot of people are believers. A lot of people, they believe that Jesus saved them from their sins. Amen. But they can't believe that Jesus, they have power to, to heal their sickness. They don't believe that they have power to, to meet their needs. What are we going through? That Jesus cannot do. Because he's there with you. He's there with you. What's lacking is that we have not given ourselves to him and allow him to take over. We have not yielded to him. Because if when we yield to the Holy Ghost, we are filled with him. He's leading us. He's taking us to God's purpose. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we will be able God is able to work his purposes through us. Amen. And I believe as a church, that's the place where God is taking us to. Amen. So the Holy Ghost brings Jesus' presence. He's there with you. It's like seeing Jesus in the flesh. And the other thing that the Holy Ghost does, he works Jesus' power. Amen. The Bible says, all power here on earth and in heaven Amen. belongs to Jesus. Amen. That means the devil has no power over you as a child of God. Amen. That witch in the village has no power over you. Amen. Seriously. All power belongs to Jesus. 
and Jesus is in you. But we can only access that power through the power of the Holy Ghost. You see why we need to be filled. The Holy Ghost gives us influence. People follow Jesus because of what he did. Because some of them knew that he was able to heal their sinners. Some of them knew that he was able to feed them. And Jesus had so much influence. And Jesus done that through the power of the Holy Ghost. If the Lord Jesus Christ needed the Holy Spirit, what's for our saints? The God himself needed himself because the Holy Ghost is God. What's more assets? God wants us to be filled today with his spirit. You know, I read something that really touched me. And it caused me to examine myself. One powerful great of man. So if we go with He raised the dead. British guy. Powerful. You know what he said? Let me ask you a question. If somebody came, a millionaire, came to him and said, okay, no. Prophetess Esther, you choose. I'm going to give you 10 million pounds right now. Choose between having 10 million pounds and having the Holy Ghost to come upon you just for five minutes. What are you going to choose? Holy Ghost. <laughs> 10 million. 10 million pounds. Eh? <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought about it. Mm. And that man meant it when he said that. Because he had seen the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. Now think about it. I'm, I, I sat down and thought about it. 10 million. It's not give me 1 billion. No, 10 billion, nothing. Because when the Holy Ghost come upon you, the things I can do, I can just imagine going to the hospitals. Come on, where's the sick? Take me to the mortuary. You You've read in your Bible, the second verse says about dry bones. You was in the van of dry bones, and God said, prophesy to those dry bones. Dry bones start to wiggle. Yeah? Flesh came on them, came on them. Life came on them. Dry bones are walking. Became having soldiers. Glory ah. to God. Ah, the Holy Ghost. Ah, my wife, if you don't mind testifying on your behalf, when the Holy Ghost came upon you in the hospital, now we've got twins. They came early. Right, and they find a few difficulties with breathing, this and that. They are doing well. And then the doctor said, oh, they need to have their uh, immunization. So the second born, the eldest of among the twins, he was given that thing, and he didn't like it. The boy, dead, dead. The nurses, the doctor, sweating, not knowing what to do. My wife is just dead. Until the Holy Ghost came on them. They will say, oh, man, man. Because they didn't want the parent to see that. They, they wanted to, to take her away. Because Michael's lips blew. They tried this, this. The boy was gone. For five minutes, the boy was dead. Gone. And my wife said, the Holy Ghost is upon her. Before they knew, he's breathing. He's breathing. The Holy Ghost. He came on for five minutes. Five minutes. He came on. Now imagine having all day of your life. God wants us to do so much. There are so many people perishing out there. There are so many people struggling with sin. Even among the believers, they're going through addictions. They are helpless. Broke. I mean, how are you going to have influence when you're broke? I tell you, when you have the Holy Ghost, 
with inventions. Amen. God starts giving you ideas. Amen. God wants us to be disconnected from this system. Amen. He wants to be sell us. He wants us to be self-sustainable. So that we can save you. Amen. God wants us like if we are to go tomorrow and say, okay, evangelist help you. wants you to go to Poland, Cambodia. Here, yeah, cool. Fans should be there. God is calling us to have an impact in this community. I did say last Sunday that it's going to start from Vision Chapel. It's going to spread through our stock on Trent and to all the way you, all the UK. And the Lord just wanted one of us, just one person from this church. He said, Lord, I am willing to let go of everything. Come, fill me with your Holy Ghost. But we can have more than one person. All of us can be filled with the Holy Ghost and work Jesus' power. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I said three things. One, the Holy Ghost brings the presence of Jesus. Second, he works Jesus' power in us. And the last one, he brings the nature and the likeness of Jesus. Some of us have spoken to a sister and said, Oh, Kelvin, I am, I have been so hurt. And people have told me that the problem I have is unable to forgive. I suffer from unforgiveness. I cannot forgive people that, that, that have hurt me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, My sister, you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost. Is, is able to love the unlovable. Amen. The Holy Ghost is able to forgive the unforgivable Amen. because it brings the nature and the likeness of Christ. Amen. The Bible talks about God exalting the humble, no. you know, and resisting the proud. No, no, no. When the likeness no, of Christ no. Jesus, when, when the Holy Ghost brings the likeness of Jesus Christ to us, it causes us to be humble. He called us to be humble. And the more humble we are, the more grace we have. There is no man in this earth that is more compassion than our Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to bring that compassion to us. Speaking of loving other people, the Bible talks about the Holy Ghost, the love of God has been shared broad on our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That means we can love the way Jesus loves. We can love the way Jesus loves. But that can only happen through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen.